Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I should say welcome back to myself because I've been away for a couple of weeks. I've been overseas on holiday. If you haven't been keeping up with my socials, then you won't know where I've been and I'm not going to tell you in this video. But whilst I was away, I picked up 27 new fragrances. Uh, this is why I've got in my haul that I'm going to show you in this video and possibly in another video, in a subsequent video, I'll actually tell you how I get these fragrances whenever I go overseas. Um, but yeah, for that, you'll need to be subscribed, obviously, so that you get the notification. Uh, and I'll spill the beans. I'll tell you all my secrets about how I find these rather rare and somewhat expensive in the Western world. That gives it away. Um, fragrances uh, and bring them all back and enjoy them here myself because that's what I do I like fragrances I'm going to show you uh, the first three uh, the first three which I bought full price and um, they're not they're not rare and expensive they're not vintages so uh, I'm going to start off with those all right and the reason why I bought these three is uh, well it's because um, okay well I'll, I'll spill the beans there by a house called Loewe it's a Spanish uh, brand they're leather works sort of brand and they do design handbags and leather goods and some fashion stuff as well and they also have fragrances and they've been around for quite a while now we have a Loewe boutique here where I live however they have a very limited range of fragrances this is disappointing because I don't go there for handbags not yet anyway when we were walking past the uh, department store uh, and in one of the departments they had a specialist Loewe counter set up like a pop-up counter set up with all of their fragrances there and a staff member ready and available to assist and I went through the entire thing every single one I went through more than once that that lady was very very patient with me and so was my family as they waited for me to sniff a whole bunch of pieces of cardboard and after doing all of that, I ended up purchasing a bottle of this, which is Un Paseo por Madrid. This is this is a line called Un Paseo por Madrid, which I think translates to a walk through Madrid, something like that. That's Spanish, by the way. Um, no habla español. What can I do? I don't I don't live anywhere that requires Spanish. I did study Spanish in university, but I've since forgotten all of it. Lo siento. All right. So this line has a whole bunch of this is this is their what can I say? Their highest tier. All right. Now Loewe is a give it it's a designer brand, right? But this particular high tier, it's one of those you know how like the designer brands have their exclusive lines. It's one of those. And there, and that's why it costs more than most niche fragrances do for a 100 ml bottle. Presentation is okay. And uh, they come in this, you know, sort of paperish box. And inside you will find the fragrance. Now the fragrance that I chose was one that both my wife and I agreed on. And whenever my wife and I agree on a fragrance, we definitely should buy it because we rarely ever agree on fragrances. Her favorites are not my favorites. And that's good because that means she won't use up mine and I won't use up hers. However, when we both agree, then it must be nice. And this is nice. And like I said, we we smelled the entire range. This was the one, Mayrit, it's called. Mayrit. That's what it's called. It is the best one, I think, in the entire line. I would have bought the rest of them as well because I'm on holiday and I don't care about budget when I'm on holiday I would have bought the rest of them as well but they weren't they just weren't nice I wouldn't wear them and if not if, if I'm not gonna wear them I'm not gonna buy them that's why we bought this one because we're definitely gonna wear this it is a very fruity passion fruity very summery kind of scent but you can also easily wear this in winter because it's quite dense it is a parfum I believe concentration I'll just, no, it is an Eau de Parfum concentration. I was fooled. I'm flying back to get my money. Um, Mayrit, I think, is 
what Madrid used to be called before it was called Madrid. I think it, for a time it was called um, Meirit, Meirit, or in between, I think when the Romans had it, they called it Matri Matrike or something like this, and then it called Matri Meirit, and then uh, when the Arabs had it, it got changed to Madrid. I don't know the story, I just loosely know um, how it goes. So that's number one. This is the one that we bought, and because it was stinking hot, uh, where we were, it was over 35 degrees and very humid, 35 degrees Celsius, like the proper measurement, uh, which is, I think, in Fahrenheit, 884. Anyway, because it was hot, I really wanted something. And because I ran out of all of the decants that I had taken already, because they just evaporated in the heat, I wanted a cool, fresh sort of fragrance and the only one that I thought was worth the money was one from the Agua line. And this is called L. Just L. There is an Ella, which is apparently more uh, female oriented. This is L. Again, comes in the box like this. Uh, they could do this better. But anyway, this is a bottle of L, lovely frosted bottle, blue color, and great smelling. Amazing in the heat. Longevity, not that great. Now, you can see that this is full. This is very full. You're saying, well, you, you bought it in two weeks. This is all you used? No, this is the second bottle because we went back to buy another bottle, all right? Because it was that good, I thought, and the deal was really good as well. It's very reasonably priced. This came to about 150 bucks for a bottle, which is pretty good. Uh, this guy was around 350. And I'll show you the first bottle, which is here, that we use regularly. That means every day for two weeks, two people. Um, is, yeah, we really liberally doused ourselves with this so that we do not stink in the hot, humid uh, conditions that we were in. And we were walking outdoors a lot of the time. And even though it had evaporated off our skin because of our sweat, it still stayed on clothes really well. All right, and what does it smell like? It smells like, uh, I guess it smells very similar to Isemiyake's Lo de Se Pour Homme, the original, except without the really harsh and somewhat annoying yuzu note that is very prominent in the opening there. There is yuzu in here. However, it is very smooth, very well done. And the fragrance itself is, is very transparent and sort of light. So it doesn't really get in your face very much, which I think worked brilliantly for where we were because there was a lot of people walking around in the heat and we're going to be in confined spaces with a lot of people and you don't want to crush their noses. You want to have some consideration for the people around you. And so this worked very, very well. They did also have a special going, um, which meant that for every bottle you buy, they gave you one of these, which are a set of Loewe branded pencils. That's right. I got Loewe pencils uh, along with this, which is a black Loewe branded eraser. Fantastic. And that's going to allow me to write things. Great. Thank you for that, Loewe. That's the... That's the gift I didn't know I needed from a luxury fashion house. Pencils, thank you. All right, so that's the three fragrances that I got uh, new out of the box. And uh, now we'll go on to the other 24 that I picked up from various places. Uh, these are all a combination of unused vintages and uh, used partials. So let's go do that. I should also state that the atomizers on those Loewe's were mwah, brilliant, very lovely pressurized, very fine mist that comes out, uh, reminiscent of very high-end atomizers. So I just thought I'd mention that being a, an atomizer geek. All right, moving on to something that I found just lurking about uh, in places that I shall mention in subsequent videos. Like I said, 
subscribe so that you can be also knowledgeable when you go to this particular place that is a very, very popular tourist destination. It's, it's hot right now. And um, a lot of people are going there. Apparently 40 million tourists a year are heading to this particular country. So, uh, and I'm surprised at the amount of vintage rarities and gems that I am finding for very, very, very reasonable prices. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, so let's see what this one is. This is the old classic Platinum Egoist uh, Pour Homme. This was the box with the Eau de Toilette Spray and the all over shower gel. The shower gel unfortunately had a leak, which I wasn't gonna use anyway, because this particular uh, fragrance is I checked the batch code. It is from the year 2000. It's from the year 2000. The, and they both sat here. The shower gel was here, but it had a hole in it, so it leaked. So I cleaned it up and I chucked that away and I kept the bottle. It's a 50 ml bottle of Platinum Egoist and it smells fantastic. It had never been sprayed. Brand new. Brand new, but 24 years old, never been used. Okay. I also found from the same person, one of these. Uh, it's a splash, F50 ML splash uh, of, well, you think it's the same thing, but this is Egoist Platinum. A couple of things happened <laughs> between, and this is a 1994 bottle. Uh, because that is the year of release for this particular fragrance, which originally started as, I think, a flanker of Egoist, which I don't think sold very well. So they released um, Egoist Platinum as a flanker of the original Egoist. In 1998, something happened, and I think this was selling a lot better. So they changed it from Egoist Platinum to Platinum Egoist, with uh, Platinum being in larger letters, Egoist being in the smaller letters, opposite to this. Now you'll see, this is a 1994 bottle, this is a 2000, year 2000 bottle, and I'll just put it in better light so that you can see it. And a couple of other things that you'll notice is, in 1998, the positioning of the words Eau de Toilette went from being above the Chanel uh, Chanel logo, I guess, the Chanel writing, and it went to beneath it. So any bottle that you see that has the words Eau de Toilette or anything like that above the word Chanel, that is pre-1998. And anything that is underneath it, that is post-1998. And that's how you can find sort of Chanel vintages, I guess but they both smell great. Um, the splash I believe is, is okay. I think I wore it um, in the first few seconds. It was, it was a little bit like, hmm, I wonder if this is turned, but it came good. So that was, that was, that was a relief. This is why I don't like splashes <laughs> because of the amount of air that gets into the bottles. These are much better. The sprays are always much better because splashes are annoying and uh, these keep the air away and stop it from oxidizing and going off. So there you go, two lovelies right here. Um, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Platinum uh, Egoist, uh, but I will definitely give it a try in its vintage sort of versions because I believe the reviews that I read, I'm a believer, I'm a believer that, uh, yeah, that, that these vintages will be much more aromatic, denser, better, maybe. I don't know. I haven't done a comparison. So let's, let's let time tell that story. Let's move on to the next couple of bottles. All right, and so I found another seller who is very much selling some goodies and that color green sort of caught my eye. What's green and catches your eye? Is it envy? No, it's not because I already have a bunch of those. It is actually, it is. 
This is the thing that caught my eye. This is the original Eau de Toilette of Dior's Poison. Now, this is not uh, an original original. Uh, this came out in the 80s, I believe. 85, maybe it came out. Can't remember. Let me double check that for you. Uh, poison, poison. Poison, deadly. Moving real slow. Uh, poison, here we go. Poison. I was correct. <laughs> Looking for a mellow fellow like devote. All right, here. Um, poison, the original Eau de Toilette. And it had never been used. A brand new one. Uh, however, it is not from the year 1985. Uh, easy telltale sign here. If you have a barcode on a box, it's most likely post 1992, something like that. That's when barcodes came on. But it is the original formulation in any case. And it is smelling magnificent. What can I say? This thing just stays beautiful. It never been sprayed before. First time to spray it. Not only did I get that, I also saw something else that caught my eye, which was green. And this is the Parfum version. This is the Esprit de Parfum um, by Dior. This is the Esprit de Parfum version of Poison. These came in various uh, sizes, I guess. And this is the middle size. This is the 15 ml. It's housed in this little coffret. And if I pull this guy out, it's a very full little bottle of poison. I wonder, too much light? Not enough light. How do I do this? Like that. There you go. And I tested this out, actually. And it smells gorgeous. It's actually better than the other toilette spray. Uh, of course, because it is a parfum. It's a pure parfum it's an esprit de parfum yeah so those are the two Dior's that I copped on this trip it's got a soft spot for me because I grew up smelling this on a lot of people that I knew well, that's that one let's get on to what else did I get and of course I was just uh, rambling around and I saw my eye caught a rectangular box that was gold and pink and I thought I've seen something like this before and I got closer to it and I realized that it is indeed a Guerlain it is Champs-Elysees Champs-Elysees it's the other toilette and it is a 30 ml and this is a 1996 bottle that I found it still had the cellophane wrapping on it so it, it was brand new had not been opened <laughs> and I asked how much and lady said 20 bucks so I said I'll take a chance on an old Guerlain because yeah, you can't really go wrong with old Guerlains not not really I mean like you can if you have a specific thing in mind but I'm not being picky this however I picked up and actually it smells pretty damn good for what it is. A very, very feminine scent is what it is. And uh, I think that it's, even when it was released in 1996, I think it would have been more on the mature side. I don't think many girls were gravitating towards this in the mid nineties, but that's okay because I guess maybe I can try it out a couple of times and see if I can appreciate it. Uh, if not, then I can move it on to someone who's going to be very, very lucky at picking up something so rare at a very, very reasonable price. Because, you know, I'm, I don't run a business here. I'm not trying to not trying to become like the next Elon Musk of fragrances or something. What am I do? Make like 20 bucks, 50 bucks? What the fuck? Who cares? Next, I also found one of these. It is another bottle of Fahrenheit. I really wasn't looking for this, but it just came by and I, I shouldn't refuse these because this is a, a 1996 bottle. And uh, if you don't know, this came out in 1988, Dior's Fahrenheit. And up until 2000 and 
2001, I think, or 2000, was the original formulation. And that 12 years later is when it got its first um, reformulation. And so I've got a 1994, 95, and now a 96. Uh, they all smell great. Um, uh, but yeah, this is my first big 100 ml bottle of it. And I wore it the other day and it is actually more floral than petroleum. I think my 1994 bottle is like more petroleum than it is floral. Anyway, moving on, I also picked up another bottle of Envy here. Um, this is a 100 ml. There's about 25 mils left in here, but this smells better than all of my other bottles of Envy. Now, if you didn't watch my previous haul video that I did after I came back from overseas um, earlier this year, I picked up like eight bottles of Envy uh, to add to the one that I already had. So that was nine. This is bottle number 10. Uh, I sold all of them because I thought I'm not gonna use 10 bottles of Envy. It's not even my favorite. I was I was offering people to trade me for Carven Ohm because that's the one that I like, um, but nobody had it. So I just palmed them off at very, very, very reasonable prices, I have to say, um, seeing how many dollars that they're going for. Uh, I, like I said, this is not a business for me. It's just fun. Anyway. I picked that up. I also picked up a bottle of Anteus. Um, this is the weird sticker version of Anteus. Uh, I have been doing some research on it and apparently there were sticker versions. It smells like Anteus. I wore it the other day. It smells exactly like my non-sticker version of vintage Anteus of which I had two bottles. Again, uh, the telltale signs there, Eau de Toilette above the word Chanel. And uh, this one didn't come with a box, so I can't tell exactly then, but that's the that's the uh, silver top there with the silver atomizer. A couple of things that can give it away that it's a vintage. Oh, and the big one. I got a 1980s bottle of Chanel's Gardenia 100 ml. Look at this box. It is absolutely pristine. No barcode, nothing. I. I did, uh, I did track this vintage, uh, I did track this batch code back to like uh, mid 80s and uh, it's quite full. It's about 80 mils probably left in here and it smells so good. It smells so good. So now I have an 80s version and a 90s eau de toilette and also a parfum from the 1990s. I think I'm good for gardenia for a bit this is probably one of my second favorite chanel scent of all time second or third i can't i can't remember which but it's but it's up there so very happy with that one uh, again i think i paid i paid more for this uh because it was full and in fantastic condition but still it was like 85 bucks which is still very very reasonable that's australian dollars by the way which you know in american dollars would be like a nickel pretty sure now let's move on to my box of goodies i put all of these smaller sort of bottles into a box they're smaller bottles because um well you'll you'll see why I just try and open it without knocking the mic knock the mic all right so um i was i found i found a bottle of this is all Stuck in there now. How am I going to get this out? Oh, here we go. Now, I found this. I saw a box and I went, oh, that's interesting. Monsieur Rochas Eau de Toilette Concentré. I've never even seen this before. I don't think I'd even heard of this. And so I asked the lady if I could smell it. She said, yeah, that's fine. Um, and I asked how much she wants for it. Given it's a small bottle of 25 ml, it's probably missing 5 mils. Uh, it's probably got 20 mils left in it and it smells great um that's the presentation it's pretty it's pretty crap but she was like uh 10 bucks ought to do for this 10 bucks not bad but she said you know if you take that you'll have to take you'll have to take this one as well and uh, she showed me a full bottle of madame rocha 
And she said, this, this, however, this is an x-ray. So you need Madame and Monsieur to go together. That's the only way I sell it to you. And I said, okay, sure. How much for the Madame? And she said, $8. So both of those were $18. <laughs> like I said, you'll need to subscribe in order to get notified because I am going to do a video detailing exactly where and how I get this stuff. Okay. Next, I found someone selling a four pack of uh, minis, four pack of minis. Now, uh, I bought that again, this was like 30, 35 bucks or something like that. And it has a mini of this, Sortilege by Le Galleon. I'd never heard of this. This is still sealed, not opened. I haven't even bothered to open it up. I'm pretty sure it's gonna smell like a vintage fragrance. Uh, this is uh, L'Air de Tom's, L'Air de Tom's, I can't say this properly ever, by Nina Ricci. I got this, my mum used to wear this when I was younger, so the smell is very, 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 um, I don't know, nostalgic uh, for me, so yeah, I thought I'd have a little bit of this. I love the bottle, by the way, the original sort of bottle with the doves and everything, that's really cool. Uh, another small one, which is uh, Femme by Rochas. Again, very, very good. Lovely, lovely Shepra, that one. And the thing that I was actually wanting in the four pack, because they all came together and bundled in a pack and I couldn't separate them, is this. This is the original Patou Pour Homme by Jean Patou. And uh, yeah, I did try this on because this is heralded as like the best fragrance of all time or just like these you know those um vintage sort of unicorn sort of things and everyone's like going about going on about how how amazing this fragrance is and all that now this again unused unopened okay original 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 all of these all of these were i wore it ah <laughs> I don't want to make judgments too quickly, but let me just say, uh, underwhelmed is, is a word that comes to mind. I don't see the big deal. There's very, 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 very few. I can count on one hand how many vintages that I've smelled that have been hyped up that were either living up to the hype or better than the hype, right? Balenciaga put on one of them. Like it gets a lot of hype, deserves it, definitely it insanely good fragrance that one even for the modern day patu po om i've like i said i haven't given it a full full wearing it was just a little dab on the wrist but underwhelmed 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 okay moving on uh, a bit disappointed with this particular purchase because i paid like 52 dollars for this and i bought it online sight unseen um and in very small writing they had mentioned that it was a 10 ml because the pictures did not did not denote that it was a 10 ml and I neglected to look carefully. I thought it was a full bottle. It smells nice. It's a nice sort of vanilla, light sort of vanilla fragrance. And now I've got another flanker of Fahrenheit. How many Fahrenheits do I have now? Like six of all of the varieties that I've got, plus multiple doubles. I'm not a Fahrenheit collector by any means. It's just happening to be that way. The next thing I picked up was uh, this Eau de Calandra by Paco Rabanne. This came out, I think, in the 60s. This is probably a, probably a 1980s kind of bottle because there is no barcode. On this particular box, it is a splash. I don't know why it is a splash. It was un, unused, unused, and I haven't actually even given it a wear. Actually, I did, I did. I dabbed it on my wrist and I thought, hmm, it smells like a woman's fragrance, but then it developed and it became really nice. So I'm kind of looking forward to giving that a full wearing. I will decant. It actually smells really good, really fresh. I will decant the splashes into, you know, uh, atomizers because I hate splash bottles. Okay. Unless they're parfums, such as this, uh, which is another one that I picked up. I forget what count I'm at, okay? 
this is Cocoa Eau de Parfum. Uh, slightly used, okay, but it still smells great. Uh, a very vintage one, you can tell from the color of the juice. Here's another. This is the 14 ml. That other one was a 7 ml. This one's not been opened as yet. Uh, Coco, Coco Eau de Parfum being my favorite Chanel of all time. I needed to stock up on the Parfum, probably the best version of it. Uh, and why not get some vintages? So this is another one. This is another 14 ml. Which sort of sits in there. This is slightly, this has been slightly used. This has been opened. Mm, smells great. It smells great. My God. Uh, here is another Coco Eau de Parfum. This is a, another 7 ml. This has also been opened, but very, 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 very little use out of that. Still smells great. And last but not least, another Coco Eau de oh, Parfum. This is a, another 14 ml that has not been opened. And it's kind of lighter in color, I guess, because it hasn't actually seen any light and it hasn't actually encountered any air. This, I, I, it does have a batch code and I did actually um, look it up and traced it back to 1989. And that is four years after release. And I cannot wait to crack that open and test it out and let it develop. Another couple of things that I got, and I had to, uh, this was number 19 Parfum. This is a, I believe it's a 14 ml, and it has not been opened as yet. And I'll show you the next one, I'll show you something else. All right, so number 19, this is the other 14 ml Parfum, which came in a box. This one's got a barcode, so it's post post 90s the other one doesn't have a barcode so it's pre 1990s and the post 90s one also has not been opened and they're both 14 mils however you'll see there is a uh, a color difference look at that color difference the new one right is green right and then the old one is sort of more brownish like this You see the color difference there? That's the that's the old one, this one, the brownish one, and this new one, which I don't know if it's coming out, but it's, it's definitely greener. So it looks, it's got like a green tinge to it. As we know, number 19 by today, by its green color. But the old one, it's more like a, a golden, a golden green. This is like a tinge of green in there, but it's golden. I don't know if it's due to age or anything like that, or if that's how they looked, because I've seen uh, vintage pictures of number 19 and they were brown, they weren't green. And I believe that's it. That's 27, 27 fragrances that I picked up uh, on my recent trip. I can't wait to travel again, even though I just got back. Love traveling, it is fantastic, especially when you pick up so many cool, things and experience new good things and eat great food and all that kind of stuff i will go through my trip and as i go through my trip you'll probably you'll probably work out how i got all of this stuff but uh, in any case that's been a very long video so appreciate your patience appreciate you guys watching as always please subscribe like i said so that you know exactly how i get this when you get uh, when i put up the video you'll get notified and as always thanks for watching